All right. <laughs> Been a little while since I did a napping video. I've got a few uh, spalls like this of this wild horse obsidian. It's uh, good stuff, and it's also snap in half, as uh, Jack Crafty would say. Snap in half-ish and step-ish. So, it might be... It might be a little interesting. Uh, I'm using the real camera so I can't see what's videoing. I'm hoping I'm in the screen. Yep, looks like about right there. And uh, we're going to go at it, see what we get. Try and get some bigger spalls or flakes to make uh, arrowheads out of. There's a decent one. It works pretty good as long as it's thick. Once it starts to get thin, it uh, it gets real steppy. Now, as you can see, <laughs> it's got some uh, see-through qualities. Get some good flakes off of there. I've got a uh, heater that I picked up from Menards. Last year, I had my big uh, indoor furnace type of thing. And uh, it was way too hot. So, I, uh, I went to Menards and I got one of them ones you put on top of a propane tank kind of you know I told everybody you like a little sun and uh, it's doing pretty good the thing is my other one has a thermos on it and this one doesn't this wild horse works really good with sandstone um, and that's uh, mainly what I'm going to use today Try and get in it, and it actually sparks some. Now you see, there's all crunchy where my buddy spalled this. Um, I haven't heard from this guy in a long time. I hope he's doing okay. He had some personal problems come about, and uh. I'm going to have to turn that heater off. I guess I'll uh, turn it on and off as I need it. Now, I've got a big hammer stone. Got a smaller. And I've got my favorite. This one looks like a finger. And uh, I use it like that. Just like if I got to get a little... A little setting up shot. Now, when he sent me this stuff, I, I was only interested in making arrowheads because basically that's what I do. When I get a good flake like that, that's, uh, you know, smooth it over. It won't run, this stuff will not go in. Like if you think you're going to fall a big thing and take up, it, it won't do it. You have to, uh, you have to have a good surface for this stuff to uh, run the flakes. That's a good flake, but it's shot down there and I don't want to bend over and get it in front of you. This has lines in it too. Can you see them lines? It's pretty nice stuff.
Okay, let me go to a more medium size. I tried antler on this stuff. I couldn't get it to work. Uh, my buddy Chuck Kimber, Chuck Learns Lithics guy, um, told me to leave it sharper. Oh, my stone's breaking. Look, that's my favorite, one of my favorites. Let's see if I got another one over here. Oh, here's one of my real favorites. This is gritty. I'm just trying to take a little, little flakes so I can get this surface, you know, turned with the rest of it. That's not going to go. No use beating the life out of it. Let's see. We'll see if we'll, uh, if my buddy's uh, recommendations are good. We're going to try right here. Not too bad. It's a little too thin. Let me move over a little bit. Oh, that's pretty good. Kind of curvy for a arrowhead, but I get uh, something out of that. There's a good one. See, now this is all I I normally do. Um, Because I'm uh, just making hunting points for arrows, but I want to try and make something out of this. We'll get there slowly but surely. Now this is a hard, uh, a hard stone. It's uh, like a dolmalite limestone. It's hard without being like granite. How thin that stuff is. How see through. And look at that flake went woo, wrapped over. This stuff will overshoot you <laughs> in a heartbeat with them real low platforms. Now there, that is a perfect, perfect flake. Straight, just the white size. We're going to put that one in the special pile. And if I was making a Clovis, <laughs> I could go ahead and work around there and call that my flake. Let's try another one right here off of this uh, that one busted up hit a, hit the concavity over here I meant it to go over more I 
Now we're going to try one right down this ridge. Ah, uh, I split it in more ways than I wanted. That'll be a good uh, trifocal, tri, trifocal point blade. There's another pretty good arrowhead blade. Put that over there. I'm reducing my chunk down. I haven't ruined anything. You can see I'm getting my thinness down. Lost a little bit of size, but, you know, realistically, the point's only going to be, you know, there's no point that's that big. So, at least in my book, I... Uh, Uh, let's see if we can, uh, this side's pretty flat. Okay. Okay, I'm going to take a pause and uh, turn the heater back on. All right, we're back and the heater's on. <laughs> I think I'm going to be playing that game until I figure out how to put my heater under my bench over there. But that's all right. I've got a nice little round sandstone. I don't know if this was, uh, you know, it's like perfectly round. It might have been a game piece or something. <laughs> Could just be a plain old rock. But I found it in my uh, creek. That heater warms it up in here fast. Even on its uh, minimum setting. Just doing some short smoothing flakes. Now I got a nice profile right there to hit. That was a nice flake. Sure, you can see. No point in making a video that you can't see.
There's another nice point flake. Got to start deciding where I'm going with this pretty soon. This is my point going to be. This is all spare stuff. So, use it effectively. I can tell by the feel. You notice I don't have to flip it over every time and see what's going on. I can tell by the feel of uh, how the flakes went. And uh, once you've done that a, a few times, you'll get to do where you can uh, where you can feel it too. I like these thin uh, cut cut gloves. They. Uh, they're pretty good. And what I did with that sandstone is I chalked it up just like on a on a pull cue so that the uh, antler will grip on. And then I can take paper thin flakes. Even on a surface that's not uh, technically the correct angle. With obsidian, sometimes you can pull it off right, right there. Now I need to get through here. Okay, 
that's not going to go. So we got to do something else. There we go. We're still following our main layout. This is our maximum length. We've got all this over here as room to, uh, you know, do whatever we need to do to get the thinness. Woo! My leather's smoking. There we go. That's better. Can you still see? Yep. See, there's the pull chalk. <laughs> pull, as in billiards. I might have ground that too much. There we go. See that nice one cleared that thin thickness out there. Now I don't know. I I think if I was making obsidian to use, like I would not be making that really fine, uh, you know, thin blades because they break, you know, very easily. Um, you know, the arrowheads, when I make the arrowheads, unless I'm making them for jewelry, I, uh, you know, I make them thicker. I make them as thick as my arrow. My arrows are generally, you know, 11, third, 11, uh, what would be 3 eighths? 3 eighths, would, uh, 11, 30 seconds to 3 eighths is what I shoot for in my arrows. Um, so my, my arrowheads are just, uh, you know, quarter inch and I might, uh, thin them at the base more so they fit in there better, but, uh, I'm not into all that, uh, you know, how thin is my point. All I'm doing now is, uh. Flicking away some stuff so I can see what I got.
See, that's some nice pressure flakes right there. And that's all with the, uh, the uh, you know, just the curved antler tine. And a little bit of uh, sand on there for grip. Let's see the other side. See, now let me show you what I'm developing, I'm thinking of. Now, say I had a board. Or say I had a stick, you know, like this. And I could tie a rope around my pressure flaker. And I could pull up on that and use it as a lever. I'm working on that idea. And if any of you want to try that... Um, that's an idea to try like a flat platform a board like this leather to where your uh, preform or flake or whatever would sit there and then you would have a loop of rope and you could stick this in and use the leverage principle to uh, to do your flaking. With this shape of, of a horn, I think it might do pretty good. If it's there and you can just pry against a lever. Um, that's coming in the not too distant future. Now this little stone, this is my saving stone. I, I This stone, I thought I lost it. I cried when I thought I lost it because... It removes pressure flakes and it doesn't leave a big bulb. It removes pressure flakes like uh, like a champ. And uh, I started using this on some uh, Kanawha Black, which if anybody knows is, is usually pretty tough. And you know, you can't, uh, you know, it don't. And all black don't play. Don't you see them flakes? There's no big bulbs of percussion. They're nice and smooth. I think it's more about your hand placement. Like I pull, like I put pressure there so the flake doesn't fall out. And so the shock doesn't like snap my rock in half. Did I tell you that I, when I use steel tools on this um, wild horse that sometimes it sparks? It sparks like flint. This is pretty tough stuff. See, I've got roughly my shape. So now I'm thinking my point is going to be this, this way. So I got all this. and I'm going to try and smooth it so my next few flakes will uh, level it out to a nice biface. And... Uh, that's pretty much going to be it. Um, I mean, I used to think, you know, I have to admit and apologize to some guys. 
some napper. So I just think, why do they start with a big chunk of rock like this to make a point? And that's because, so they can set it up to, uh, you know, to make it perfect. I obviously want mine to be close to perfect, but, you know, I'm not perfect. And I'm more worried about the sharpness. Okay. We've got some low platforms here, so we might overshoot. I'm going to have to try and stop that. See that? With that low platform, I had to be very careful to put my pressure right here to stop it. If I would have held it back here, it would have wrapped over. And then you could make your little uh, Cahokia point or Shumla or Scalorn out of that flake. It's uh, snowing outside, <laughs> it's raining, uh, snow, rain type mixture. There's another one. Now you see how I'm setting my uh, pattern up. Have a nice look, and I might just, you know, take it to a biface and call that uh, good enough for now because I got to get this heat adjusted. I just wanted to make a video so you all know I'm still alive. I've been working a lot. I have uh, two jobs. Um, one at uh, Panera Bread, making sandwiches, which surprisingly... I really enjoy doing and uh, another one I went back to work in my uh, trade uh, you know my trade I've been trained for which is uh, repairing uh, furnaces and stuff because a buddy of mine he can't get anybody that knows how to knows how to fix a thing anymore so See, I got a weird lump right there, and if I don't trim it good, it's not going to let me take a good flake. But I have, uh, you know, in the past when I napped, I, I used jigs like uh, the Slodger, I, I don't know how you, Soldier, Soldier jig, you know, and I used uh, the guillotine jig. Stuff like that, uh, but since I've uh, recovered from the cancer, oh my leg is burning. Since I uh, recovered from my cancer treatments, I've uh, initially started using a lot of Jack Crafty stuff. That guy, you know, he actually got me back into flint napping in a way that was more than just. Uh, utilitarian you know to, to uh, supplement my bow see there now we got a nice pattern now when if I was going to make a Clovis I would just work this down on this side move this edge back down do this side and then carefully pressure flake it so it has a, a, a biconvex shape and flute it and it would come out pretty good but I'm kind of a scared of this uh, wild horse because it doesn't it doesn't like to behave once it gets thin. See, what while it's this thick, which is where's my tape measure? Hmm. 
It's gotta be. I know I got a, a caliper or something around here. Oh, well. Oh, I have a measuring stick over here. Behind my uh, waste chips. So let's see where we're at. We started with probably a four inch wide chunk. We're at an honest two and a half wide. And an honest three eighths thick. So that, <laughs> in technical terms, is thin. That's uh, three eighths into, you know, Three eighths in the, even if it was a half, okay, if it was a half, it would be five to one. So three eighths is easy, six to one, almost seven to one. So you don't really need much thinner than that. You know, that's, it doesn't look thin, but if you make it so thin that it looks thin, in my mind, it, all it does is break. <laughs> I mean, Maybe you guys got the magic touch and stuff, but I want to be able... See, I made this into a spear point. I want to be able to put it on a spear, and I want to be able to stab something and not have it break. I, I've seen uh, videos like Donnie Dusk shooting uh, ribs with his arrows. Um, the points break, the arrows break. You know, they don't go through the ribs. They only go through the rib if they get in between. Um, it doesn't look very impressive to me. Um, and that's because I believe that everybody makes them paper thin, paper thin flat points. Now, for me, I would point this point down, taper it down, have this back thick and flake up in here so my arrow would fit good. And then I would have a nice thick chunk of rock that would power through. And I've honestly, I've never had an obsidian point break or glass. For, for five or six years, uh, um, when I first started primitive archery, I made bows. For, for probably four years before I started flint napping, I made bows. And then uh, in traditional archer, there was an article about flint napping. And I thought, wow, that would be cool. And I started doing what I had with broken window glass and bottle bottoms and beer bottles. Um, at the time, I knew nothing of Flint Ridge. There was no internet, so it wasn't like today when you could just log on and say, you know, what's Mr. Crafty doing? Or, you know, Brad Moore? Or, or friggin' uh, Dusty, uh, uh, Dusty whatever, is, I can't think of his name now, but um, all, all them people, Clay Hayes, you know, what are them people doing? There wasn't that stuff back in the day. So you, you had to learn, and I learned on glass. And I, I went down to the uh, to the glass store in my town, and I asked them, I said, hey, you got any odd pieces of glass that I can buy for cheap that are, you know, 5 sixteenths or 3 eighths thick and got some color to them? And that's what I learned on. And I made points. I killed two deer with them. Um, they were both does. You know, they weren't massive bucks. It wasn't It was two does. And I killed a lot of squirrels and rabbits because squirrels and rabbits was my thing I liked to hunt. And I never broke. I never broke one of them. One time, I uh, in my yard target practicing with the glass point, it broke, but it broke down like this. So this was just like a razor blade. It took this, and it was just like a razor blade. So I could have just shot it right again afterwards. Um, so if you're a hunter, I mean, I guess you could make them paper thin points to hunt with flint might be better i didn't have flint back then and you know i can't hardly afford to buy it now to be honest um you know i'm kind of retired and i'm only working part-time at two jobs less than you know 15 hours a week total so you know i gotta do with what i can do and uh you know i'll make arrowheads out of them other ones they're thick these flakes like this flake is a quarter inch thick. 
I'll make an excellent arrowhead out of that for hunting. I won't thin it much. I'll just shape it and, you know, thin the edge. Um, same with that other flake. Now, these ones, these ones I'll make uh, jewelry out of, you know, because they'll be thin and see-through and people can see the patterns and stuff. But uh, I wouldn't hunt with, I wouldn't hunt, I wouldn't hunt with an obsidian arrowhead that thin. Now, if I was going to war with another tribe, would I shoot him with an arrowhead that thin? You bet, because I want that thing to break up inside him, and he'll never get it out. And every time he moves, he slosh around. You know, even if he pulls the arrow out, there'll be bits of this. Um, so, paper thin for people. Thicker for, uh, for game. Well, that's all I got for tonight. I'm going to get off my high horse, and I hope you guys are going to enjoy this move, this video. Uh, here's my uh, main deer antler. We'll go there, and uh, that'll be it. Thank you for watching, and good night.